Here are the basic questions and other considerations for an error analysis for an introductory science lab. In this video, you will be taken through these considerations using the Gravity Lab as the example. Please review the video outlining this lab. It involves measuring gravity by dropping an object from a known height and measuring the time of drop. There can be many sources of error explaining why the deduced gravity might not match the theoretical value. To properly analyze based on data, you need to check whether your results are accurate or precise. In addition, you should check whether there were simplifying assumptions in your measurements or your calculations. What were the exact mechanics of the measurements? And when you had identified multiple sources of error, which ones are the most significant? We will use the results to identify whether we should be looking for random sources of error or systematic sources of error and conduct some sample calculations to quantify whether these sources of error explain the observed inaccuracies or imprecision. Here are example results from four lab groups based on their deduced G values at each of the given heights. Group A's values are as shown. Notice that the average of these values is slightly higher than the correct value of 9.8 meters per second squared. Hence, there is inaccuracy to their results. Taking a look at the standard deviation, which is a measure of the spread of the values, we can see that their answer was fairly precise. Their measurements were consistent. It is likely 
that this group's measurements are dominated by systematic sources of error, but there is still some room for random error as well. Looking at the results for group B, their average says that they had inaccurate measurements, but which were very consistent based on the standard deviation. This group should be looking for systematic sources of error. Looking at group C's measurements, on average, they had a highly accurate answer. However, Looking at their standard deviation, we know that their results are unreliable, they lack any precision, and should be looking for random sources of error. Group these answers are both inaccurate and imprecise, and the magnitude of the error says that we are still looking for systematic sources of error that as it turns out, could have been inaccurate calculations. Now for a demonstration on identifying significant sources of error. This video will not take you through all sources, but merely demonstrate it on one. Consider the possible error that either the height measurement or the person accurately dropping from that height might have an imprecision of a full centimeter. Let's plug this in to our calculations for G. We can then report that the uncertainty of our G measurements is plus or minus 0 0.1 meters per second squared. That is only due to this error. If you compare this to the standard deviation of the measurements of every group, 
it seems that this is not likely to be a significant source of error for most of them. Because human reaction time was involved in measuring time, there could be greater uncertainties introduced there. We will leave it up to the viewer to estimate this as the source of error. 